All right, so yeah. Hello, guys. Once again, we are going to begin with another episode of Shoutcaster Sessions. So, uh, big heads up first. Okay, before that, actually, I need to show myself on stream. Of course, it's going to be super weird that you don't see me on stream. Uh, hang on. There you go. So, as you can see, I'm back to being Blue Sarai again. My hair is uh, of that color. <laughs> and we do, I have kind of fixed a little bit the stuff here. You can see, you can do like a like, a like thing if you, or a follow thing or subscribe if you like the content and whatnot. Uh, there's also topics on the right hand side which will be coming in for later uh, i'm not really sure what else we can actually do maybe i'll make a poll uh, a post where you can put in topics for the shoutcaster sessions for the next episode and i don't know who that is troy minator i actually checked that out who is that person ah i have not played the game i have not played life is strange so i don't really know hey what is up lee six all right guys welcome to the stream or rather to the, uh, I guess I could just call it like a IRL or a podcast type of deal. But we'll have guests. If you guys want to listen to me, I am also in the Discord channel uh, at A Rank, the A Rank voice channel. Discord server A Rank voice channel where you can just listen to me. And then uh, later if you have any questions with shoutcasting and anything Anything around shoutcasting? Yeah, I, I'll just answer that. So, for the meantime, I have to give like an update for tonight. We won't be having any guest, guest shoutcaster because I am a total dingling. Uh, what happened was I actually got two per people already. One guy and I believe one girl or one boy, one girl to join me for later or one dude, one lady for later. And the biggest thing was, I was trying to download a replay from CSGO uh, HLTV, but it just kept, um, it just kept failing. And I couldn't, and I couldn't, you know, fix, uh, or I couldn't download the replay. So now, I don't have anybody to <laughs> tutor because of my mistake. Um... Again, this is I, I will reprimand or at least I will fix this by Friday, and uh, hopefully by then we'll have that. So maybe this is like a a faster episode of Shotcast Sessions. And yes, I did color my uh, hair once again. I got it cut first, and then I asked my mom to put hair color there, and it looks not too bad. It actually looks better if wait, hang on, if the light's shining on it even more. I don't know if that actually uh, shows it, but yeah, that, that's what it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what the heck? Sorry about that, Ricky. <laughs> Ricky in the chat, guys. And hello to you too, Hayama. Uh, sorry I didn't update you about the hair color thing. Uh, totally forgot about it because I didn't really uh, told anyone. So yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Lul kapakabalul. Okay, so I guess we can start with the talking points now. Uh, we'll go for. <laughs> so here are my topics for tonight. There's four stuff that I want to discuss with you guys in terms of shoutcasting. I hope it didn't stop my stream from that. Okay, no, I just hit something. All right, so there's four topics, and one of them will be knowing how to last longer. In shoutcasting, there will also be the talking points in shout when you shoutcast in a game. There's um, hype casting, which I kind of like subdivided into a couple of stuff. Uh, I was thinking about what was the best thing to uh, uh, kind of like go over with hype casting because of obviously since we're living in uh, in the Philippines, the norm for shoutcasting is or always. I don't know if it's, if it's gonna be always will be, but it it is already hype casting. Yes, last longer exactly. 
There's not, it's not even honesty. It's more of like, I just forgot. I didn't even lie that I was like, oh, hey, I'm not going to get my hair colored this week. <laughs> All right, so I'm just bringing up my thing here. Uh, all right, so again, this is just going to be a very quick, I think, episode of Shoutcaster Sessions, unless uh, we can have maybe another guest speaker here to help us with stuff like this. I should really actually have someone else to join me just to make it, um, I guess, longer if Rico wants to join. If you're still there in the chat, maybe. Uh, I'll try to see if I can find someone else to ask here to join us. Well, I don't think I have... Really thought that I would be able to have used or, or, yeah. Did it get picked when you did the Shoutcaster Sessions episode 2? Uh, not yet, man. I'm not an FPS caster though. No, that's just going to be on the last part. But everything else from how to last longer in Shoutcasting to hype casting, I think, is going to be fine. Yeah, I, I got the FPS casting one. Yeah. Hang on. There is some ground control things that are happening here. And this is just a just like a small intro. We've been talking for about I guess seven, eight minutes here. Uh Troy Minera tipping the scales once again. Oh my gosh, Troy, you are crazy. Twenty-five dollars. Holy shiz, man. You are on a different level, brother. Thank you so much. Gratitude, man. Gratitude so much, man. Thank you so much for that. Road 2, you know what I mean? Road 2. Because uh. um, right now, all of the donations that you give, I'm actually going to be uh, using as funds for this coming June, which is um, going to Computex because Riku got the connections and then she asked me if she wanted to go to Computex. Uh, it's alright, it's alright, no worries, no worries. I, I can. I think I can do this for maybe like 30 to an hour. Hopefully I can make it to an hour because I think podcasts should at least last that long. But yeah. <laughs> Hello again to you too, Lee6. Alright. Oh. So again, guys, please uh, mute yourselves. Thank you. So it doesn't really uh, go with the... Or you know, interrupt with the show. Thank you so much, guys. All right, so I think we can start right now. Um, again, this is, I think, going to be a very quick episode because there's... I don't know if there's much to talk about here, but again, this is going to be the the topics for... For now, you can check it on the right-hand side again. and Or is this the right-hand side? Yeah, this is the right-hand side. All right, so first topic is how to last longer in shoutcasting because there... Okay, so... Quick backstory to this one, though. I have I started shotcasting with the Garena Philippines group again with uh, Riku Amplifier, Shinbu, Neep, and others. And what always happened to us was that we had uh, a good enough amount of time for shotcasting, which was I guess around two hours maximum, maybe three hours maximum. Like every time that we would cast, it would only be like two best of twos unless it's the finals of the pro gaming series, which wasn't really that long, maybe maximum of three hours of shoutcasting. And there was always a shoutcaster rotation. So that means that I didn't get fatigued this much. <clears throat> I was able to shoutcast properly. My voice didn't, um, didn't rasp or anything and all the shebang. And but that but everything changed when the Fire Nation no 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 but everything changed when I started shoutcasting at Mineski. Uh, when I shout when I first first uh, shoutcasted at Mineski, there was only I think me, uh, Kuya D, and Denki who were like the who were like let's say seventy five percent shoutcasters for Mineski, and then there were fifty percent who were the um who were the outsource we we were inside Mineski already we were employees and then we they would get us for shoutcasting when we needed coverage and that's when it all went to and that's when it all, all hit the ceiling because i was thrown into an environment wherein i didn't have any 
possible mix up of shellcasters. I did have at at some points of I guess the first year of the of the thing of at the first year of the of my career or of my working hours there or working year there. I don't know how do you how do you call that? But yeah. So basically I was shoutcasting let's say six to eight hours nonstop. Well there would be like five to ten minutes break, but nobody was switching up with me. It was just me and my co caster, be it uh, again Riku, um and other ones, but mainly because I was the main shoutcaster at that point, I would always shoutcast continuously for for the day uh until the day ends or until the coverage ends we at csgo league of legends uh dota 2 most uh most notably and it really does a number on your throat and the thing that i learned was that you have to conserve your voice and the thing and a big example if you don't conserve your voice is what happens to i think um this happens a lot to Shinbu, wherein because he's such a hypecaster, uh, I'll get into hypecasting later. Because he's such a hypecaster, he immediately loses his voice. Even though, again, uh, he, again, he immediately uses his voice, like maybe four or five hours into casting, because he is just that hype. And again, this is not saying that he there is in any way anything wrong with his casting it's more of like it kind of like ruins you if you have to still cast the day after that or the day after that which always happens when you shout cast uh when there's an event so for example there's like pinoy gaming festival uh which it, which started like friday till saturday right or su- sunday that's three days and imagine if you have a booth there that needs needs to shout caster and you have to shout cast every single day for let's say Three to five hours, and then you always hype cast every single hour, or or rather every single minute of that five to three, three to five long hours for three days straight. You will lose your voice if not on the second day, the third day, and the quality of your voice deteriorates. The quality of the stream or the cast rather deteriorates because you can't really see, um, you can't really you know expand yourself, or rather you can't. Keep yourself going like that, rather. Uh, for all of your questions, guys, uh, after this topic first, how to last longer shoutcasting, I'll help you with those questions. So just drop them in the chat there in twi- on Twitch. So um, the thing that I figured out here is a little bit obvious. So before any shoutcast that you get, you need to have proper amounts of sleep because not having good enough sleep, and this has happened to me recently, I think yesterday, I did not have good amount of sleep. And I just like started having the worst, or not really, but my regular sinuses acting up again. So I had like sniffles. I have to keep blowing on my nose so that, you know, um, yeah. And it really does affect the stream. So to hinder, uh, to, to help not, uh, to, to avoid that from happening, what you have to do is that you have to have a proper amount of rest. Yes, parents tell this to us that we need proper amount of rest when we're kids, and it still is applicable when we're older because we do need it. We can't just, if especially when you're going to be in front of the camera, you don't want to look at haggard or anything and stuff like that. Actually, it's going to be one of my talking points, I guess, on the next uh, episode of shoutcasting sessions, shoutcaster sessions, which is proper grooming uh, for shoutcasters. Don't have to really go for... I mean, there are basics, but yeah. So anyways, proper amount of rest so that your voice will heal properly. If, like, the day before that, you also did a shoutcasting, uh, or you did shoutcasting. Um, so yeah. Uh, also, before the shoutcast, this kind of helps out because... I don't know if this will make you last longer, but this kind of, like, opens up your mouth a little bit, which is doing uh, mouth exercises. It sounds weird. I know it's silly, but mouth exercises really helps out with you when you want to talk in a better range of your voc- or of your voice of your voice, you know? So like cuz most of the time you just speak in like this type of like your your mouth doesn't open properly, like so, uh, or rather it doesn't open to a big enough scope. So how you talk is like this, right? Just look at my my face. I'm just like like that, I know. Again, sounds weird, but like, 
if you if you do mouth exercises it does help you at least um massage or like let your muscles in your mouth kind of like open up a bit more making your um how you kind of uh how i don't know how to pronounce i don't know what's the term for it but like it helps you relay your voice better because basically your mouth is like a acoustic right for your vocal cords and then being able to open it up more um lets for more sound or better sound to come out so something like that and the thing that i uh, learned was from college which what i did was again this is super silly to hear or even to listen to but it does work which i which i learned from my english professor who um which is called like the tweet twat exercise i know twat sounds like a real uh like an insult or something but it, it really is that so before a shoutcast uh you kind of do this for i guess let's say 10 to 15 uh, 10 to 15 seconds per motion depending on what you want so like tweet like you just try to stretch as much as possible to the very back of your jaw uh, jawline here and then twat like that so you just open your mouth and then Actually, you can do this right now if you guys are there and you're not with anybody. You can try to do that and see what the difference is after you do something like that. You kind of like immediately loosen your your mouth and it really helps. So like, for example, you start your day off like super early. You just woke up and you need to shoutcast at say like one hour onwards. You haven't had your coffee yet, but you have to shoutcast immediately. Something like that kind of wakes you up because you have to stretch out your, your face. And then it also like helps you um, bring out you know a better uh like i guess a better relay on how to yeah how to do your voice exactly it's a, it's a thing that singers do as well because again shoutcasting is kind of like the same as singing where in you have to sing for arts on end if you like if you like have an, an event right or a concert so it's kind of the same thing <laughs> and if you can do that in public and not feel uh, shy about it it kind of helps as well if you're like in an event they're like oh what the heck is this this guy doing he's like you know opening his mouth and closing it what the what the what the heck and then uh, and then you don't give you don't give a rat's ass about it that's actually just helps you out as well with your jitters in like a, a public setting <laughs> oh my gosh all right so i mean that, those are just the before uh before shot casting again it, it can help you out I do it from time to time, honestly. Because since I I always like talk like this, I kind of don't I, I don't need it as much. But I still do it whenever I feel like my voice or I can't do um, continual casting because I feel like my mouth isn't uh, um, like stretched out enough. Okay, so next one is what do you do to last longer in shoutcasting do while you're shoutcasting already during a shoutcast, right? So. Obviously, it kind of like basically longer shout casting or long shout casting is like a marathon. And what do you do when you do a marathon, right? A oh, big shout out as well to Opa Butters, one of the shout casters there. If you're a free poppy, um, I can actually maybe use your help for this type of uh, episode. Talking points in shout casting can really help out. So, again, um, back to the topic first. So during shoutcasting, what do you do to last longer in shoutcasting? So, oh, actually later, if you're good in like maybe 10 minutes or so. Yeah, I'll give you a heads up in on, yeah, on FB. All right. So, plenty of water. Water definitely helps out with your throat. And again, it's like a marathon. If you're going to try to last as long as you can, you need proper fluids in order for you to, you know, not feel exhausted or anything, or at least f or keep refreshing yourself. And uh, it's not only water, you can also go for, for hot beverage, which again soothes the throat. But I do kind of like tell you guys not to use any hot beverage with sugar. I don't know 
uh, if it works on with everybody because i um i had people before who like drank coffee with me uh when uh as casters and then they had like sugar on it and then they were okay And yeah, it doesn't really affect them, but it might affect them. So I don't know. And yeah, so hot beverage. The best one that I found was tea. Uh, ginseng tea would be the best because they said that ginseng is really good for your voice. And I think it actually works when I used it before. Uh, water, definitely the cheapest and most accessible one. And then here's something that I think people don't really... Uh, Put their minds to when shoutcasting in prolonged periods or like for an hour or like hours on end which is aside from drinking plenty of water which i always do conserving your voice so that's actually a really big thing here is that conserving your voice when shoutcasting i know it sounds pretty like oh Asurai, that that is um, how do you say this? That is counterintuitive. How do you, how will you conserve your voice when you're talking all the time? And yeah, I get it. But what I mean is, you you don't have to use a hundred percent of when you're talking always. Like for example, um, right now I'm not even using, let's say thirty or forty percent of my capacity of my voice. I can actually give it, even go higher than this. Uh. So you know what I'm saying? Like, I try to conserve my voice as much as possible because it does help. It basically, um, aside, like, again, you're, you're running a marathon, right? And you need to keep fueling yourself up. But there's still a part of your body that cannot be um, refueled during the marathon, during the shoutcast. So that is that that resource is, like, your voice capacity. And the best thing here to do when you're trying to conserve your voice is not to always go into berserk shoutcasting mode or react or like emotion shoutcasting mode um the a best example of this is all right say we go into a dota 2 league of legends game right and you try shoutcasting it and then every single time Every single time that you find a clash, a steal, a, a, an objective taken, you always say, Oh my goodness, they go for a clash, they get a kill, first blood! Which is fine. But then, how about the second kill? Oh my goodness, he gets a second kill! But it really isn't like the most explosive second kill ever. You can keep yourself, you know, chill at that time. Oh, he gets a sec. Oh, that's gonna be a second kill. And then dot, 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 dot. I'm gonna allow them to transition into the bottom tier one. Dot, 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 dot. Stuff like that. You don't have to be over o overly aggressive with your shoutcasting because stuff like that depletes your voice really, really quickly. You don't think that it does, but it will. And I have tested this so many times where I did a shoutcast on the ver on the very first game, on a, a, day, sh a day of shoutcasting on the very first game wherein I used all, all of my voice and I couldn't <laughs> get it back for the entire day, which was horrible for me because obviously... My throat was already burning at that point. And yeah, exactly. It's 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 like hype casting. We're in best example for hype casting is Squiddy and Boslon, who always do does hype casting. And I have no idea if their voice can actually deal with all of that for continuous hours. I've have I have watched them and think they can, but I don't know if a lot or at least most of us can keep up with something like that i i don't so i i kind of conserve my voice so it's something like that you have to conserve your voice and yeah i'll, I'll go into hypecasting after uh, after the next topic of this one so yeah there you go talking conserving your voice all right so we have some questions here which i kind of want to answer in uh you guys can keep dropping your questions there i'll probably ask it uh answer it for about 10 minutes since you know Want to keep it as interactive as possible. I have a boring personality. How can I improve? Uh-huh. I... Mm, I honestly don't know. Because I myself, I, felt, I feel like I have a boring personality as well. 
And the thing that I kind of made uh, did to, I guess, improve upon that is get out of your shell a bit more. You know, like, if you're an introvert type of person, um, try going out a little bit more, experience the world, and they think you can use that for your shoutcast. I, I know it sounds really lame, uh, the, I guess that's not really it. This is, I actually don't know, like... I have never met because any anybody who I have met in the industry of shoutcasting always has that type of personality with them. Although I have also been with other shoutcasters who kind of are more direct and don't have that, let's say, quirky, insane personality when they're shoutcasting. I think I just bring it out of them when I'm super corny when I shoutcast. So I think uh, it's not bad to have that type of personality, man. I think it's just more of like just how you can kind of develop that. Like, you know, I don't think anybody has a boring personality. I think they just have, they think it's boring because they're with people who are too, um, who are too noisy or at least who are too outgoing, you know? So they think of, uh, of themselves as boring. So what I think here you should do is that you should look upon in, in yourself, within yourself. Wow. Like, Feng Shui, man, uh, yin and yang, the balance in between. But anyways, so if you think you're a boring person, I don't think you are. Uh, firstly, I don't think you are. So what you kind of have to do there is try to look within yourself and what is your best quality when you, with you yourself, you know? Like, for me, i just give myself this example again. For me, I totally love to do really corny puns and dad jokes and all of that shebang and i always bring it to the shoutcast whenever i can especially when i do english shoutcasting and america uh, especially when you have like english viewers out there because um i think that's they appreciate it more than filipino viewers because there is a certain um there's a certain barrier with me and filipino viewers that i can't joke properly with them uh <laughs> i don't know what that, why that happens but yeah you should just keep looking within yourself my man and find the best pop the best personality you to have and expound upon that when you shout cast again i did talk about this before which is to bring out your personality within your cast and again i don't think anybody anyone it has a burning boring personality i think it's just that they think it's boring but yeah maybe if you're like into let's say anime or let's say you're into current happenings within the Philippines. And it has been done in Mineski Shoutcasts within like where, let's say, again, some of the shoutcasters called, um, for example, in Dota 2, Terrorblade, the hero, has a skill, uh, his ultimate skill is called Sunder, right? But then they kind of mix it up because uh, they know somebody from, or they know, you know, the current, celebrity scene and then they called the ultimate sunder San sander forge uh stuff like that you know kind of like again depicts your personality into your casts like you're creative with su stuff like that you can use that or mm, if you're kind of more a uh yeah, yeah that's that's i think that's the best way that i can talk about that but yeah uh next one is how to deal with bashers um that's a little bit more intricate because it it took me a very long time before i was able to get past my demons in in that aspect you know wherein i was like whenever i sh when i started ca shoutcasting in garena there were a lot of bashers but we never checked the chat when we were shoutcasting so we can focus always on the shoutcast Um, hang on. I mm. uh, had to burp there. So, yeah, because of that, we never really got into a point that we were being bashed and we actually saw it during the cast. So we can never feel bad when we're casting. Outside of casting, it doesn't really matter to us. But I think during the cast, when you can see the chat, it really, really de de like demoralizes you. But the biggest thing that I learned is and it's kind of again it kind of makes sense you think that it's easy to do but with some people even with me it's not which is to absorb all the hate and to use that to your advantage i 
and now again i don't really know how each and every one of you will be doing this but again i'll just use myself as an example because yeah i'm the one doing the talk here uh the talk show here so like what i just do is for example english uh, uh they're calling you like a you know an english monkey or something uh, or like uh you, you sounds you sound very conya um never def defend or like don't defend yourself with that because like you're basically countering them what you try to do is thank you for, like what i just do is like thank you for that thank you for that comment man essentially this is how i talk uh shit like that and then say hey, gusto mo try ko magtagalog para sa pare oh yeah shit like that you basically answer to your viewer you adjust to them but you don't like bow down to them you can still go with your regular you know style of casting but yeah nasa pilipinas ka magtagal magtagalog ka yeah i i know and it, it it's super weird cuz again i think the the biggest type of hate or the most con constant hate that i get is i always Shoutcast in English because that's my that's my go to language when I shoutcast, and that's why I kind of prefer going with English shoutcasting rather than going for the Tagalog casts. But <clears throat> but the thing that I did here again in this particular um, issue with me is that I after a year of getting bashed like that, I slowly but surely learned to do Tagalog shoutcasting, but I never let go of English shoutcasting because I love. English shoutcasting. It's just again my 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 language norm. So an answer to bashing, if it's something like that, is that you try to adjust to it, but don't let yourself get lost to it. You know, you don't lose the personality that you use in shoutcasting. Like for me, I would never be done with my puns because it's just something that I love to do. Every single time that I cast, when I can do it in casting, if my partner is like the, the type of person I can do that type of shout casting with, and stuff like that. Um, but for example, they call. I actually don't know the other ones. For example, they call you ugly, and maybe another one that I always list, uh, that I always see is that you know, guys, I, I work or I shout cast for Mesky TV, but there are also other channels out there, and they say like. Oh, Minsky TV is like the weakest shit here, you know, because they they're not casting with they're not using Kuya D and Boss Law with their shoutcast. Sana na dun na kami sa kabilang channel mas maganda pa dun. And again, these guys they can you just ignore these type of guys, you know. You just keep doing your thing. I understand your that you're trying to adjust to make people happy, but if you're not happy yourself, you won't last long with the shoutcast, right? And I have, before, I what I do was, guys, intay, uh, I always answer this, guys, intay na lang kayo, uh, mame, baka mamaya magkasi ko edi sa kasi boss lun. But now, I kind of like, went in with like, guys, they're taking a break, kami muna mag-shoutcast para sa inyo. And basically, what we just um, indirectly tell them is deal with it. We are the shoutcasters here. If we don't get, if people keep saying na, oh, you know, um, Stupid mofo, you know, the, the viewership here is, isn't is as big as the viewership on the other channel, shit like that. Who gives a damn? You're doing the shoutcast. Pe people are appreciating it. If there are more people who appreciate it, they'll stick with more with your channels. At least those who are watching with you now are people who are loyal to you and your branding, you know? Just give yourself some time. Give, your, give people some time to adjust to you too because that's just how it is. Don't adjust to those type of people. Just do what you do and... Again, try to get over the fact that they trash talk you. Yeah. Again, ignoring bashers, that's the most common way. But I think what you should do is bring in the bashers. Because bashers are also viewers. You know, if they if they say, like, for example, if you stream first, all right? Streaming can also be, like, some a form of shoutcasting because you talk every time on your stream. And... This will be uploaded to YouTube, and I won't monetize this, but, like, let's say, oh, uh, there's, like, a viewer who says, oh, you have a small dick. What the, what the fuck? Like, right? You don't... <laughs> and then, like, 
what does that even have to do with anything what i do is like all right so this is just a very common answer for me now but like hey bro you're using a very used up you know really lame ass trash talk here try to step up your game man we need something better and then if he comes back the next day to trash talk you again bada boom you have another viewer they like you more and you don't feel like you're a total you know loser for not for like saying oh come on this apartment io shit like that right so something like that Uh, exactly and then or like you answered him with like oh no you haven't seen this thing man come come oh, meet me up meet me up with me personally you never know maybe that's like a a girl trash talking or shit like that <laughs> how did this transition into this type of, of of talk show yeah but again it's it's, it's stuff like that <clears throat> uh i cannot answer that um cuckleberry finn one that's not part of shot casting so yeah So there you go. Basically to deal with, with bashers is not really to ignore them, but more of to absorb them within you, you know, and just adjust from that. Okay, so let's go on to the next topic. I cannot believe <laughs> I went there, but yeah, I think this will help out a lot of people or stuff like that. Anyways, next talking point here is, or rather topic here is talking points in shoutcasting be it MOBA or FPS there are others out there like let's say Rocket League you know sports esports sports type of games um but the most common is again ma um massive online battle arena or first person shooters and there are similarities but they're all they're also like wakanda number one there's also differences to how you look at the game and the biggest thing that i noticed here i'll, I'll get more for i'll get first into mobas and then fps um again this is a, this is gonna be a little bit difficult for me to talk about as well because again I'm not an analyst but I have used this time and time again so that I can never run out of anything to say even though it can be repetitive at least you don't give yourself dead air when you're shoutcasting. <laughs> yes, I just say look at the number one and to the and to the guys who are just following the stream right now thank you so much guys for tuning in and hope you hope you're having a wonderful wonderful time listening to our shoutcaster sessions um episode one we actually made a mistake and it was shoutcaster sessions with an s it was supposed to be just shoutcaster sessions too much s's anyways so moba talking points and this is going to be very important for uh much of much of when you start shoutcasting let's say you get to shoutcast league of legends i think that's gonna be the best one for me there's always gonna be a flow to any moba game right which is early game mid game and late game and with all of these um levels or how to say this uh, timings within the game there are specific there are the specific stuff that you can talk about that will at least help you, you know, relay information to your to your audience and as well as not lose anything to talk about. And in front of your screen when you shout gas, there is your weapon already, which is a lot. So uh, I'm mean, again. This is just I'm not gonna I'm not gonna point out everything, but you can get a good enough gist when i start talking so first of all if it's a moba game check out the roles first of every single opponent or every single player rather it's not you're not playing a game you're watching the game and shout casting it so for league of legends you got yourself the solo top you got yourself the jungle the mid and the the duo bot and what you try to do here is check out where these guys start off in the game during the early game right because positioning is definitely key to how they start something you never know maybe the the jungler starts at the red buff on, on uh, if he's like on the red team he starts on the red buff that's gonna be top side right and if he starts there that means that maybe three uh two minutes 30 seconds or uh, close to three minutes he'll be somewhere in the bottom lane which would mean that he'll be able to gank the bottom and then you see you you note that he was a jungler 
where he started and that information like uh, gave you something to work with as the game progresses so something like that for example let's say another thing here is the item the the items that the that the hero has or the summer spells that they have at a certain time for example let's say there's a, a leblanc versus zed mid and the leblanc forces zed to back off because zed wasn't good enough to throw out the shurikens he forces the flash and then let's say the timer was like um was around three minutes and then again this is just uh an example five minute uh there's like a five minute cooldown to flash right so that means that within uh, until eight minutes um the zed won't have flash which would mean that the the jungler again might be ganking the mid in the next five minutes because he knows that the zed's only escape tool is a w which is his shadow out so stuff like that you know you kind of you kind of have to keep note of everything that's happening within the game and the thing that you can do to uh and yeah and just try to do something like that with different aspects of the game and it'll definitely help you have something to work with you're not going to be the most insane analyst here but being able to rely or relay these types of small informations can really help out bring more color or context to the viewers out there that they might have missed you know and honestly even for me i don't really get every th single thing right here especially when i cast dota 2 because again it's not my forte i have not played it ever since league of legends is i think really my forte and i'm slowly getting back into it which uh again i'm kind of thankful for because or rather i'm kind of thankful for globe because they're you know they're bringing league back in or they're bringing league into the philippines to a to a whole other level so yeah with the conquerors manila uh, happening i think very soon somewhere mid-year i think so yeah stuff like that notable things moment or notable stuff in game uh, other things like that is the interactions within the lanes. It, every lane would have a rock, paper, scissors, uh, rock, paper, scissors, right? So, again, I'm going to go back to League of Legends because I think this is the best example for me for MOBAs. I don't really know the rock, paper, scissors of Dota 2. But for League of Legends, let's say let's go to the top lane. And then we see ourselves watching a Riven versus, let's say, a Gnosis in the top, right? Who would win that matchup? 100% or almost always or maybe close to like 90% it's gonna be Nasus because he has armor reduction against their opponents he has lifesteal and he has an extra boost of HP with his ultimate so he's very his his kit even uh, against Rivens even though Riven is pretty oppressive Riven still has to go through her skill rotations she doesn't have the best CDR at the start and stuff like that so again keep Keep all of these information in your head. I know it's going to take some time to get used to it. But once you do, you get yourself a lot, again, of weapons to use for your cast that you can never run out of stuff to work with. And that's always the best thing. And the better thing, if you can do it, is that if it's not always repetitive, I... Because there's a lot of times wherein when you shout gas, you have to go back to your talking points because... You'll, you'll lose stuff to talk about. Really good shoutcasters or top top tier shoutcasters would never or won't go back to these talking points. But it's always good to go with this. Uh, but it's always goes to. Uh, but it's always good to go back because at least you can actually maybe get something out of that and use it for another um, uh, another thing to talk about in the cast. So yeah, something like that and it'll just help you another thing aside from yeah so aside from that rotations and all of that stuff if you think about it it kind of like meshes all together items rotations uh let's say power spikes as well wind conditions also is also something that you can uh it's very necessary within the game and I think win conditions in League of Legends is much more easier to decipher for me than uh, Dota 2 because I think in League you cannot immediately understand what these players want because League is a bit more um, is a bit more 
understandable or a bit more solid when you look at it. So for stuff like that, win condi- uh, basically win conditions is a parameter or let's say a quest that you put yourself with your composition, with your team composition to do first in order to win. Because, for example, you go for a composition that has a team fight presence. For example, again, this is just going to be very basic stuff, but it will help you at least understand stuff like this. Um, Oriana with a Malphite. So you have a comp- uh, two here, uh, two champions that can do a really good team fight presence. So your win condition is to start an ultimate with the Malphite and follow up with the Oriana. That's the most basic, and that and when you hit three, uh, two to three members. That's your win condition. That's something that you can take note and give you know information to your viewers. Yeah, you need you need to learn as much as you can about the game. I don't, I don't, I don't I'm not sure if like, yeah, I think yeah that will be pretty good because I was about I was about to say that I, you don't have to learn everything about the game to shoutcast the game, but it helps if you know every single detail about the game. I don't think. Everybody can do this because there's not enough time because you also have to understand pl- uh, players as well, teams as well. So yeah. So there you go. Those are your talking points for shoutcasting. Like always try to take note of what is happening in the game. I can't really give the the basics or rather the all of it, but the bakes the, but the basics that I've seen are um, uh, team compositions team rosters um uh, players what else items item builds rotations power spikes win conditions objectives at hand stuff like that that you have to keep in your head always spinning so that you can always check out what to do uh or what to look for when that certain time comes up yeah it's a very it's very iffy but it does make it does make a lot of sense, and it is one of the most important things that you have to do with shoutcasting. Keep note of what happens in the game. All right. Um, next topic here is hype casting. So, again, we live in the Philippines, right? And the Philippines is, again, a country... In, 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 in the esports side of the Philippines is a country that again is really with the hype casting it, it started like in early 2000s in Dota 2 again with Mine- I think with Mineski and others that have made hype casting one of the norms or the most the most common way of casting so let's begin what does it mean to be a hype caster a hype caster is like a play-by-play that tries to give as much or tries to lure in the viewers with the hype. You know, they try to bring up the emotional state of the viewers wherein they were just watching so uh, like they just like for example they're in their, they're in their homes, they're at the venue just watching like this. But then what hype casters do is that they try to put your uh, put these players into a point where in they're like oh, Ooh, like that like you know all of that emotion comes out um with the factors of how good the play is how how deep into determined we are and how the hype caster brings it out of the people and yeah how do you become a hype caster is it just you shouting whenever there's something happening on this on the screen again this is me going back to shoutcasting a little bit but it makes sense because uh yeah it's gonna be something and how to be how to be one you don't have to literally shout on every single thing that you see that it's not hype casting that it's basically shouting already which is not really good to be a hype caster you have to be i feel like you have to know when to trigger yourself with the hype casting you know when to start when the snap of when to transition from just regular casting you know going with your regular voice conserving your voice and when the when 
the action happens when the biggest play or when one of those big plays happen in the game, that's when you go up. And how do you do this? Again, it goes back to how you see the flow of the game happening. And you can... you. I think you yourself, I don't really know how to, but I think you yourself can already analyze that. For example, you're already 40 minutes into the game, League of Legends, and our opponent has Baron. They're pushing in for the kill here. Your Nexus ex is exposed. No more inhibitors. One, or actually two minutes before all inhibitors respawn, and you have to keep yourself alive. They go attacking it right now. There's like very little HP, 30% for it. There's going to be the Vayne ADC from your side of the team. Going in ham, killing three right now. Two, 10% HP, one more. He actually saves it, 1%. And there you go, right? That's what hype casting is. I was visualizing it happen... And the more the the play intensifies, the more the clutch happens, you get yourself hyper and hyper. And that's, I think, where hype casting becomes, or rather runs its, or becomes at its peak. Where in the most clutch of situations, you can still climb out on top. And when you can bring something like that, it definitely is uh, a, a very powerful tool, especially for hype casters. And again, to be a hype caster, you just have to know when to do these hypes properly lots of people uh again there there are points in time wherein you might make a mistake and hype cast something but there are also intensities to hype casting you can go like uh okay hyping like you're just raising your voice a little bit there's also the super intense one where i think even myself like for example they're going for the gg push and what happened against against uh during the Arena Valor Philippines finals where they were already going for a GG push. It was already game seven. Yeah, game seven at the very peak of it. And then the the I think that was Clutch Gaming versus Will New Era. Will New Era were going for the push already. And there wasn't really a clutch moment happening, but there was already the point where they were going for the GG push. How much was that? 500,000 pesos almost in their hands i was already losing it i was screaming at almost at the top of my lungs not really to the point where in you'd what well, not really went to the point that you destroy your your voice or your mic but still kind of like showing to the people hey guys these guys just won five hundred thousand pesos what up boys Sh stuff like that so knowing what uh knowing what happens within the situation and bring out the proper uh, the proper hype cast for that, or the proper tone for hype cast for that will definitely help you. And then continuous doing for that will definitely just give you uh, the knowledge of when you should hype cast. Yeah. So again, if someone asks, how often do you have to hype something up? Again, it depends on you, but try to keep it to a point that you don't go to hundred percent, hundred ten percent when there's not really the most insane of plays. If it's pretty good, then you can hike past it. But if it's just pretty good, you don't hike cast it like that, you know? I think it's when you shrieked as well, Rockheart, yeah. <laughs> it's the moment the hype when the hype kicks in. Um it again when the hype kicks in, you gotta still calm yourself because that might be the point that might be a, a, a fake type of hype. Uh, or rather a uh, a situation where you don't have to hype it again even though it looks really cool you don't have to hype it <laughs> i know it sounds a little bit silly but it is what it is you got you got to control it because in the best sense hype casting really does a number in your voice and it goes back to conserving your voice that you don't want to lose every single that maybe for example like you go for a game number one and it's like the craziest thing but because you overhyped yourself even though it's fine even though people like it the next game, it's still pretty hype, or even maybe even more hype, and then you lose your voice. It's not the ideal situation, right? <laughs> so, yeah, stuff like that. Always got to keep yourself uh, controlled. You can lose, a, lose yourself a little bit, but always keep yourself in check. And if you don't keep yourself in check, I think there's going to be a point where you're going to be cussing during shotcasts. So yeah, something like that as well. Okay, 
So we are about to go to the final talking point or final topic of today's Shoutcaster sessions, which is FPS casting. This is going to be a bit more of like, how do, how do you do FPS casting? Um... So there are very again I did say some talking points in MOBA F, in MOBA but you can also use that in FPS casting but to a to of course a much more uh, I would say adjusted degree that you have to take note of what is happening as well uh, or rather you have to take note that this is a first person shooter not a MOBA this is just from me starting from League of Legends and then transitioning a year or two years after into CS:GO uh, again, when there was the MPGL CSGO portion of the Mineski tournament, Mineski tournaments. And the first thing that I learned with FPS casting is that it is going to be very repetitive because in in MOBAs, there's always going to be the one, the one map, right? But with FPS casting... Uh, especially with games such as uh, CS:GO or let's say even Rainbow Six Siege, um, what else? Uh, yeah, those games they're always going to be to the point wherein they they keep rotating or rather they keep repeating round after round after round. And the best way that I was able to adjust to it is. Mm. Well, again, the best way I was I was able to adjust to it is that I was just you know I was just really into FPS at that time. I really understood what the game is, and uh, the talking points again that I think this more of this topic is more about um, how to cast how to FPS shoutcast, and I think there's uh, flows through it that um, which is gonna be again there's gonna be the play by play, and then there's also gonna be the Poster analysis, yeah, definitely what uh, Fuzzy says in the chat. So, how do you do FPS casting? Well, first of all, if it's gonna be CS:GO, you check out first. All right, so we start the so we start the round, right? And again, like I said, during mobas, you have to check out first the players and their items. Thank thankfully enough, in FPS, of course, there's going to be always different items. And these type of weapons can change the outcome of the game. For example, right now, uh, in CSGO, the meta item for for pistols, or at least for... Uh, yeah, or rather for pistol rounds, is to... Uh, if you're on the CT side, four, or at least the basics, four people go armor, and then one person goes defuse kit, or maybe... Three people go armor, one person goes full uh, utility, and then one goes for two flashes and then a diffuse kit, stuff like that. And then you kind of use it again on your cast. And then what happened... Alright, so... Okay. Uh, again, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm, trying to think, I'm trying to think the other things that I kind of like look upon this. And that's only the one thing. The other thing that you have to take note is the biggest thing, actually, that you have to take note, especially in FPS casting, is the map. The map is your best friend in FPS casting. Always look at the map when you shout cast, and then look at where your opponents are positioned, where their rotations are, what they are thinking, what happens. For example, we go to, um, let's say, D Dust 2. I think it's the most known map for all of us here. When you play CS, uh, CS, if you look at your opponents, they're somewhere mid, and you don't know where they'll be going to, but you can even understand where they might go to, which is they can transition to B, they can transition to A. That's where the map comes in. Always check the map for rotations for the CT side and the T side, and then uh, when that happens, look at your look at your look at the players where they set up their smokes and stuff like that. Uh, if they if they're gonna go for one way smokes, if they're gonna go for full commit smokes, if they're gonna go for fake smokes, all of this comes from just looking at the map. And the map is your best friend. Always check it out. And uh, yeah, Dusty is coming coming back to the map pool. I think it already has. They've announced it like I think two weeks ago. So it might already be out there. So yeah.
And all right, so I've already talked about the talking points for FPS. I think you can just um, get it from that. It's very, it's very simple. All right, here. But here's the other thing: what happens when you have a game or an FPS game wherein the rounds are just keep on rolling? How do you keep yourself? Um, how do you, how do you kind of use that in your cast? Because again, we're shoutcasting a, a best example CS:GO, which which repeats every single round. So what can you use in that type of environment to your shoutcast? And I think the biggest thing that you can use is that it is here's one because CS:GO is a game of of economy as well you can use those rounds as a comp uh as like a computation of when your your the players will buy this and this for example full buy half buy ecos force buys stuff like that and it all comes to the knowledge of what round it is or how long they've been saving per round right and the other thing is also, guys, um, if you have other questions for shoutcasting, I'll definitely uh, I'll be glad to answer it because I think I'm about to finish um, this talking point already. And the other thing that I always take note for is that I told um, I told you already two things, right? Which is to check the map and to keep checking the rounds itself. And here's where you kind of mix that in between. The thing that I always do, which in I'm kind of always proud of when I do FPS shotcasting, is that every single round, you take note of where your opponents position themselves. And if they have a weakness within that position, try to talk about that the most. If like they're always pushing, let's say, B, and they always get countered for that because it's such a low, uh, small corridor. They can't uh, go for it because they don't have proper flashes and smokes. They can maybe transition to A. And then you can keep on rolling. Like, And when they transition to A, they kind of they kind of like miss the point where they should like smoke left side because there's always that one guy with the AWP there, the sniper rifle. And they need to block out the vision. And stuff like that, you get from, from analyzing what happens in the rounds and how much money they have per round. So stuff like that, you can always combo and it gives you that extra level or that, that extra level oh yeah, of how you cast an FPS game. And I think this is going to be kind of applicable to games such as, what are the games that you can use here? Um, let's say Overwatch. There's no economy there. Actually, there is economy in Overwatch, which is ultimate economy. And I think... Uh, CD economy as well, the, the skills. So stuff like that, you could say that maybe if, if you play Overwatch, if you want to shotcast Overwatch, um, is that, oh, Genji goes in with a dash. He's already used his, uh, whenever he goes for the dash, he always likes to use his block already, which kind of like leaves him vulnerable. So all you have to do is just wait for him to use his dash and then block. And then you can just, maybe if you have a McCree on your team, you can flashbang him out afterwards. So little stuff like that again you can all you can use this type of analysis or at least understanding of fps titles in across all borders even PUBG, i think you can do something like that um for example we go for the early game of PUBG, wherein they go to let's say uh georgia paul town and they use that that early game to farm up and then they got so much heal that they were able to just use the mid game and late game, or just and then they use the mid game and late game to just keep on going to the circle, not really fighting for fights. They're not looking for kills; they're just looking to get a top place, which is the best way to get points. So stuff like that. Yeah, a good knowledge in meta in CS:GO is really beneficial for analysis, definitely. And in any game, meta is super important. I think uh, in CS:GO they kind of still go for the meta, wherein if you're gonna lose the first pistol round, the second, the second round, if you're gonna be on the losing team uh, or the team that didn't win the pistol round, you immediately or at least you can decide to buy up or force buy into armor plus CZs because CZs right now is a very inexpensive, really good item. Of short burst weapon that can allow you to steal your opponent's items so see stuff like that which I think is already a given but it does again help out a little bit but I think the biggest thing that you can use is that you can use in FPS casting is rotation because 
in MOBAs, you can actually just stay in the lane and farm. And then no that no really big no insane analysis will come for that. But every single step that you do in high competitive shooters definitely have something because you're always on the move. There's not a shooter that you don't have to be on the move at least, you know? So yeah. If you have any questions, guys, I'm giving some time here for you to ask it. Uh, from Beerbot here, can you have like an exercise for the future episodes wherein you play a clip and then I'll shoutcast it then review and give feedback afterwards? Yes, I actually did that on the first episode. I was actually supposed to do that today with already two people uh, lined up. That was uh, one guy and one lady but again there was an issue with my download of the replay so it kind of sucks and now i just have i don't have anything so yeah so again stuff like that um i'll be doing that i think on the next episode which is this friday again also guys if you can actually give uh do me a favor here i will be making a post at my facebook page fb.com slash ph and what i'll be doing there is that i will be asking you guys what you want me to talk about in shoutcasting if i haven't covered it yet here and you want to ask something definitely something that would be you know uh something helpful and at that uh, for dice home here yeah you can record and listen to it yourself definitely but i think having someone who has had experience and give you other feedback rather from yourself can really give you whoa can really give you some contrast on what you think is right and what you think is wrong in shell casting. And yo, big shout outs to the awesome and cool for that prime sub. Holy moly, man. Thank you so much for that one, brother. Welcome to the stream. Uh, after this FPS, I'll, uh, after this shotcaster sessions, I will be ending the stream and then coming back after 10 minutes to go for my regular streaming sesh. So yeah. And all right. So if I'm going to do something like that, uh, if I'm going to do something of like, you know, lining up people to try to shout cast, I have to have a uniform game for them to cast so that we don't actually try to go for clip after clip after clip after clip. So yeah, again, big shout outs to the awesome and cool for giving that prime sub gratitude to you, brother. Thank you so much. Big support to the channel and also to Candy Grace here to learn. Sorry to say if you're, if you just actually came in here, uh, we're about to end the stream. Uh, or rather the the segment but if you again i'm giving time right now for you guys until maybe until like 9 30 to answer all of your questions if you miss any of the broadcasts of shoutcaster sessions don't worry guys i have you covered i have all of the shoutcaster sessions on youtube you can just listen to it you don't have to actually look at it um for the most part some of the parts you have to but yeah Oh, it's all right. I was actually posting it on my Facebook page, I think. Yeah, um, I try to make shoutcast sessions every Monday to Friday at 8 p.m., so yes. You missed the hype casting part? Yeah, a little bit. You can just, again, check the VODs. I'll, I'll upload them by tomorrow, so don't you worry, uh, Paradox. Uh, to Candy Grace here, who is asking, is it possible to be a shoutcaster nowadays even if I'm alone? Uh, I heard that these days I need to have a duo. And again, I think I've answered this on episode one, but I'll answer it here again because again, um, to answer, to just give you some clarity, the easiest way to shoutcast is to have a casting duo. But that doesn't mean that you have to shoutcast with a casting duo. It's just that if you shoutcast by yourself, the pressure is kind of doubled that you have to talk non-stop by yourself you have to always check something around the map that maybe your shoutcasting duo could have done for you and then they you could have added upon that which would have at least lessened the strain on your brain when you're trying to like figure stuff out when you're casting and <clears throat> Uh, the other thing to that is you kind of take the role of being a play-by-play -play and an analyst all at the same time so yeah 
but here's the biggest thing that I think like that's that's uh, like the pros and uh, I guess I guess like the 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 trade off to shout casting when you're alone and you're uh, casting with a duo. But in no me in no means that you can't shout cast alone. You can definitely shout cast alone. It's just that you have to be mindful always of how you shout cast. Um, to fuzzy, you also need to control the camera. That is a yes and no. There are games where in directed camera is already already good, but in Dota, I think you have to control the camera. But here's another technique that kind of uh, other shotcasters or like I say third party shotcasters do when they're spectating a game. You just find an observer that controls the game, and you follow the observer's commands. Because if you try to control the game while you're shotcasting, it's gonna be a little bit difficult because you're kind of like doing three things at the same time. Or multiple things at the same time might not be the best. So I guess at least trying to go and find a good observer during that game that you're shoutcasting is going to be really good. Wow, this shoutcasting is pretty big. Uh, yes, it is. Honestly, again, the reason why I, why I did this shoutcaster sessions is to try to get people into shoutcasting. And those who actually have tried to get into shoutcasting but haven't really gotten, let's say, roles because they were denied during like auditions or whatnot is I'm just trying to give them all of these um, these talking points wherein they can use this to shoutcast or improve upon their shoutcasting. Uh, summarization of Hypecast for High Paradox. All right, so again, you can just watch this again, uh, watch this on the YouTube up uploads um, by tomorrow, but all right. So again, what does it mean to be a Hypecaster? Basically, hype casting is just something wherein you try to bring the most out of the clutches things that is happening in the game. And the way to do that is, of course, to elevate your voice in shout, in shout, uh, when you shoutcast. To br not just only elevate your voice, but to bring yourself to a point wherein you're the most excited in that part of, uh, point of the game. But there are do's and don'ts in hype casting, wherein you don't hype cast basically a deward on or like a, on on stuff like dewarding, um, just take, breaking a, t a tower that it doesn't really mean that big of a deal in the game. And again, it's basically like what I uh, what you what you do with casting is be mindful of the forest. Just know what. What flow of the game you're in, and if that flow of the or if that part of the game already requires you, or or you can actually do hype casting. And yeah, hype casting. Aside from that, the biggest joy that you can do or you can have as a hype caster is that you can emphasize the best thing that has happened in the game. And I think like the uh, Dota Two casters have done it before, like the million dollar Echo Slam. I think that toby one shot casted like he just went insane or the dj black hole again from manila majors stuff like that can really like bring the one of the best parts of esports which is those moments the most insane moments of a game anyways thank you so much for the follow uh fuzzy and candy grace thanks for joining the academy guys so yeah uh, I guess we're good enough for maybe two, three more questions if anybody else has some uh, questions there. But if they are, again, be, uh, the topics already that are on the right-hand side, they have already been talking, uh, the points that I talked about um, when the stream started, so you can just check that out on the VODs on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Gaming. So I'll put, uh, put the links uh, maybe on the next uh, episode. So yeah. I'm just going to uh, try to um, rest my voice a little bit here. You should shoutcast for me when I'm walking around Jerusalem. <laughs> what now? Shoutcast for me when I'm walking around Jerusalem? Uh, I don't know if I should. I think that I don't know. I actually have no idea. <laughs> All right. So another question here is: Did you try rapping in clash? Uh, in clashes when you shoutcast? 
Well, if you can give me like a video, maybe I can try shoutcasting that to ring news. But I don't think I'll I'll do a really good job at it though. <laughs> All right. So the question again is: Have you tried rapping uh, when clash uh, when once clashing happens? I have tried to do it, um, but I'm not really good at rapping. But I can do is. I'm um, trying to like go for that fast style of casting. So yeah. Um, but it does require you to be very fluent in the language that you do and not to stutter. I stutter at times, but I try to do it as fast as I can. Yeah, I do fast casts. It's very fun as well. How to prevent reading mentioning profanity from chat? Read it first before you say it out loud. Yes, that's the best thing. Uh, what game are you going to play after the Shoutcaster sessions? Um, I kind of want to get back into Fortnite, but maybe I can go for League first? I'll see, I'll see. Yeah, maybe I'll try to go for maybe a league game or something. We'll see, we'll see. I really miss Fortnite though. Maybe some PUBG. Hmm. I'm checking here who I can actually play PUBG with. Huh. Is he really still banned? Uh, banned because of that uh, thing that he said, the racist one. Ah, I see. Ooh, go for that sneaky frog, yeah. Let's go play PUBG. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Might play PUBG, might play PUBG. Rap style, rap casting is very difficult. It, it You really need like to be talented or at least practice in that part. I try to do it. It's not really my best thing, so yeah. But still... Uh, would definitely like to try that out in the future, if ever. So... Oh, man. I am seeing this starts tomorrow. Damn. Oh, also, shout -outs, uh, uh, shoutouts there to Troy Minator, who's gonna be, I think, attending IEM. So, he's gonna be, like, in the front row seats, I think. He told me, uh, he was, like, talking about that the other day. So, big shoutouts to him, and hopefully he has, has a fun time with that. It's gonna be awesome sauce. So, anyways, I think that wraps up for our Shoutcaster sessions here, guys. And I'll try to do more topics. Again, I'm going to be posting something on my Facebook page for, like, topics that we can discuss during the Shoutcaster sessions uh, within the week. So, please check out my Facebook, fe.com slash ph. That's going to definitely help me out to um, give you guys what you need to... Uh, like what you want to talk what what you want me to talk about if it's something that I can talk about definitely gonna be uh, something I want to help you guys out with anyways I think that's about all the time that we have for the shoutcaster sessions and again guys hope to see you on the next one and if you guys enjoyed or weren't able to watch the entire stream I do uh, I do have a VOD upload that's going to be up and running by tomorrow at my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Gaming. So with that in mind, I'm going to be ending right now, guys. I love you so much. Thank you for joining and just giving me so much uh, love here. And I hope to see you on the next one, guys. So... Yeah, I'm going to just be going off. See you guys. Thank you so much. I'll be coming back like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and then I'm just going to go for my regular stream. All right, bye-bye.